Hi. I see a donkey. Okay. So, uh, usually the cows are in the same spot. She's always there. So sweet. Gertrude here. Actually, I, we never introduced officially the other cow. You should uh, come. So we got Gertrude. We got her son. We call him Little Big Horn, even though he has no horns. That, uh, with the big horns, is Muñeca, also known as Tex. And Maple is poking her head out back there. Being, being mysterious. <laughs> Getting Gertrude all saddled a little more. Oh. And yeah, Munieko hunts us down because she hears we have alfalfa, which they love. So you know we call this the grain-free gallon um, because we don't feed the cows grains. Most people do, that's like the snack they give their cows as they load them up on grains. Our snack is, and I'm trying to be quiet because of her. I'm trying to be quiet because she already hears me. Our snack we give them is alfalfa, which I'm not going to move around the pellets because if I do, she's going to hear. But if you just look into this jar, those are organic alfalfa pellets, which is literally, it's just grass. It's just the grass alfalfa in pellet form, but it's very tasty to them. Um, and yeah. That, that's their snack and they go crazy for it. Why and how I got into raw milk and now in milking cows. I grew up, I guess, consuming like the, the standard American diet. I definitely didn't eat like fast food all the time per se. Um, my, my mom cooked at home most nights and all that stuff. But normal store about milk was like it is for most people was a staple of my diet. I think I was raised on you know, 2% reduced fat milk. And it wasn't until I was like a little bit at the age of 15, more so the age of 16 and then definitely 17, where I started really getting into health and, and wellness and all that stuff. And I started learning, whether it was reading or listening to various health experts or even listening to um, Sean McCarthy, who's the founder of the Ted's Foundation, about all the negative health effects of processed dairy. You know, the stuff I and most people were raised on. Um, stuff like how it increases inflammation a ton, how it um, dampens the immune system, and it, and it kind of creates a lot of mucus, which I remember as a kid. I remember like if I was sick or I had a cold or a sore throat, I, I, I never drank milk because I remember it would like create a lot of mucus and phlegm and irritate my throat. Also, I was learning how it made the body really acidic, which that could be a whole topic of an episode in and of itself because it almost every disease state starts in an acidic environment. But um, especially how when you have a very acidic body, you're way more susceptible to getting sunburn really fast because your body can't absorb essentially all the nutrients from the sun. So instead it fights it and creates sunburn super fast. Obviously genetics and, and skin tone play a role there too. But when I started getting off of dairy and started switching more to like nut milks and stuff like that, I, I felt great. Like I, I had really, really good results. Um, my recovery from working out because I was working out all the time was way higher. Inflammation was way down. Um, I didn't have that kind of mucousy, dampened uh, immune system that I was kind of used to having. And I noticed too, when I would spend a long time out in the sun, I wouldn't get burned as quickly. So I felt great when I wasn't consuming dairy. The reason I kind of circled back and now I'm all into raw dairy, over the couple years following that, I felt like I started just seeing and reading a lot and hearing a lot about raw milk from all types of different health experts and people I was reading or listening to, I felt like that kept coming up a lot. The Weston Price Foundation has a ton of research, uh, which I'll probably cite, on 
how good raw milk is for you and how different it is than normal milk. And it just kind of really made me curious because I was super into health. Um, obviously, I grew up on traditional milk. I was like, this is, you know, one food that I've never really been exposed to. But it was pretty hard to find because I quickly found out that raw milk, by and large, is illegal. It's, it's illegal to sell in a normal grocery store. Now, it depends what state you're in because um, different states have different laws. I was spending the winter in Florida and I found a farmer's market that had it. So I saw their stand and I like, ran up. I was like, oh, do you have any raw milk? Because I was super excited at this point just to try it and um, see what the deal was. And they're like, oh yeah, we do usually have it, but we're completely sold out. So then the next week I went earlier, um, they had it, I think, I think I bought like two gallons maybe. And I was really paying attention to all the things, all the symptoms that I would have usually had from normal milk to see if any of those came back. And I started drinking it and I was training a ton at that time, both working out and jujitsu and all this stuff. And I had no, zero of like the inflammation response. My inflammation stayed very low. So that didn't spike up at all. I had none of the kind of dampness and mucus that milk usually created for me. And the big thing that made me realize how different the raw milk was, was I was in South Florida, outside all the time, and it did nothing to make me more sensitive to sunburn, which usually if I was drinking normal milk, I, I would be burnt to a crisp very quickly. I got really into it when we came back up here to Virginia. Um, they don't sell it at farmer's markets, so I had to go through some more loopholes and actually buy part ownership of a cow because that's the thank you Gertrude in the state of Virginia is you have to technically buy part of a cow you're not allowed to pay for the raw milk you pay for the cow and then you get the raw milk until um, a few months ago where we found these guys four family cows um, that a little family near us had and they were moving and they were selling them and they asked if we wanted them and we were just kind of like, why not? So the other benefits I really kind of started noticing was I really feel like the raw milk is an extremely powerful food for a lot of reasons, but for myself particularly, I noticed it seemed to increase the physical power and strength that I would have when I was training or working out. I just felt like it gave a, a much stronger edge than I had before. I just really noticed that the raw milk to me started making a big difference in that. For example, on the deadlift at 225 pounds, um, my old max was I think eight reps in a set. And then shortly after consuming the raw milk, that went up to first 15 reps in a row at 225 and then 19. And now my next goal is to get at least 25. I mean, that that's just one example of a lot of different things that I've noticed since drinking the raw milk. So as soon as I was taste, uh, started consuming it and noticed that it was extremely different than store-bought pasteurized milk, that's kind, of, uh, that's kind of what led me to be real excited and, and passionate about cows and, uh, and raw milk. So that's my story. Thank you guys for watching. And if you don't mind, I have to get a grain-free gallon. So I will see you guys later.